Cool, so episode three. We've kind of uh, made quite a lot of progress, really. We are at a point now where there's nothing supporting the engine. The engine is actually hanging on the chassis rails on its own set of mounts. They're all still tacked together. They're not finished or anything, but I've got the dummy mount in there. This is gonna be changed for a Vibrotechnics universal mount. They're all drilled and bolted into the chassis legs. And that is now the engine in what is essentially the correct position based on the ride height and the, you know, to get nice straight drive shaft angles. So that's the first thing. That's the first kind of major accomplishment. The now the engine is now actually attached to the car. Right, so I'm now starting to look at engine mounts. Um, I've got some more material in. I've been playing around with some cardboard patterns as always. And I've got an idea of what I want to do. So I mentioned about those Vibrotechnics uh, style engine mounts, and that's what we're gonna use on this. The only complication is um, more on the other side than this, well, no, more on this side than the other side, and that's because we've gotta kind of curve the engine bracket over the top because we want the engine weight to sit on top of the bushes rather than pull down on them. So I've cut a few bits of steel already based on these kind of cardboard patterns. Uh, but it's just me playing around. First thing I'm going to do is make a steel version of what those bushes will be. I want to make a steel version so that it's got no play in it at all. The idea being that if you start with something that's got a bit of play in it, like a rubber bushing, it's far easier to make something that's kind of inaccurate. Whereas if I make a steel version, there can be no like, flex in it, like all my brackets have to be bang on, um, or else it just won't fit. Whereas if you've got a little bit of play in something, you can kind of you know, you can kind of cheat a mill or two here or there. So that's the idea. Make a steel version of those brackets first, just cutting up some bits of plate and some bits of tube, drill and tap it. And then, uh, yeah, I can start looking at um, how I'm actually gonna make these mounts onto the engine and onto the chassis rails. Right, so what I've got is a fake engine mount, essentially. This will normally be rubber and you kind of, it has like two studs sticking out top and bottom. So I've kind of just made this a steel version, like just some square bits of plate and then threaded it top and bottom. So this is now gonna allow me to kind of mock up the engine mounts without actually having to worry about any kind of movement and stuff. So these will just get scrapped. I mean, I might save them for something in the future, probably not, but yeah, like for the, for the time it takes to make these, it's gonna save quite a lot of hassle. So, um, yeah, I can kind of start working from my cardboard and deciding uh, how exactly I'm gonna make these mounts. Right, so this is what I've come up with. I've basically got the mount, which will be on the chassis leg, and that'll be braced either side. Uh, the actual rubber bit goes in the middle, and then I'll have like a big box mount on top. How easy this will be to install, I don't know. I need to kind of tack it all together and try it out, I guess. So that's the next step, is just getting it all tacked together and then, uh, yeah, actually trying it on the car and seeing what it's like. Um, I'll also have a big reinforcing plate on the side here. And um, so I'll have like a couple of bolt holes down through the chassis leg and then a couple of bolt holes through the side. Um, and that's the beauty of using this three mil wall box for these chassis legs because I can drill it and tap it. There's no need to try and put in any kind of um, like reinforcers or anything. It's more than strong enough to bear the weight of, you know, kind of one side of the engine. So yeah, I'll, I'll get some tack welds on this and see what it looks like. So this is what I've got. Um, it's essentially three pieces. Um, it will more or less have to be installed as one unit. So because of the, um, because of how narrow the Allegro is, I don't want to come outside with my mounts and that would have been a far easier way to do this. Um, I'm actually having to mount above um, and bolt underneath. It's a bit hard to wrap your head around, but so yeah, what I've ended up with is um, we'll have to kind of, basically, the, the mount, the actual rubber bit, will be bolted into this chassis mount. And then 
I need another hole in top of here. And what you'll do is, essentially, that'll slot in there, you'll bolt it on, and then you'll drop the whole thing on, like, as one unit. Bolt it onto the chassis end, you know, nuts and bolts in here. Bolt the engine on, and jobs are good. And obviously, it all needs welding up, tidying up, cleaning up, but again, I'm just trying to make uh, some kind of significant steps forward and I'm not too worried about tidying things up and fully welding things at the minute. So I'll work out the location for that hole, get that drilled, get these ones drilled and tapped through the side. And then uh, we should be able to remove some wooden blocks out of one side of the engine, which will be nice. So, I've now got no wood under one side of the engine, which is nice. That's a, you know, a good little achievement um, for the kind of few, well, hour or so that I've put into that. Um, that's a good step forward. I, I'm sure there'll be a few people looking at that thinking it looks kind of overbuilt and a bit agricultural maybe. To be honest, I think it's really difficult to make these kinds of shapes like really strong and also look pretty without spending like a full day on it. I think I will re-engineer some of this as we kind of move further down the line. Again, this is all just tacked together, but one of my pet hates is like totally under-engineered engine mounts. Like people um, kind of just building them from really thin sheet steel, not really any thought put into it. You know, th this engine is, is, is pretty heavy. If you were to have an impact, you would like it to stay attached to the car. And normally it's only attached by, you know, realistically four significant points, an actual mount either side, and then a steady front and back. And I just think it, it doesn't really take that much extra time to make something that's super, super sturdy, um, that you know you can rely on. And you know, again, it's one of those things where you wanna try and engineer something that is gonna have great like driver feedback and if the engine mounts aren't even very solid, you know, it's, it's just one of those things that's kind of going to ruin the driving experience. And, you know, fatigue creeps in. You know, the engine is doing a lot of work. There's a lot of torque, a lot of power. And if you can't actually keep it attached to the car, um, you're never going to manage to put that power down. So, yeah, we've, uh, we've got that sorted. Um, I think, again, I will tidy some of this up. Um, I'll probably, like, round off the top here and round off some of these and get it all looking a little bit nicer. I might even actually cut that at a 45 and plate it across the back just so it's not like a solid angle. But we'll probably end up mounting other things to this. So the reason I kind of wasn't too worried about, you know, making quite a big platform on the top is this will make quite a good turbo mount. So that's for the future. So yeah, now just a case of getting on with the next side. Right, so this is what I've come up with. Same as on the other side, bolted straight into the chassis leg, top and through the sides again, keeping it all just nice and square. I know it necessarily doesn't look the prettiest, but I kind of don't think you're gonna see these engine mounts anyway. And I'd rather that they were strong first and look pretty after. You know, like the aesthetics isn't that important to me when it comes to engine mounts. Like I said, I'd much prefer them to be strong. We'll tidy them up a bit, and I think when we when we weld them, they'll kind of look um, they'll look a bit more impressive anyway when they're welded. The only thing I haven't kind of done with the top is I haven't had any reinforcement or anything. This is just a plate at the minute. And I will probably add a gusset in at the top. And then what we also need is a torque mount. So the Civic Type R in the FN2 and in the EP3, I think, have um, what you call a torque mount or an engine steady, really. Not that these have much torque, but they call them a torque mount. So it's a steady on the bottom and on the top. The, they both normally fasten back to the bulkhead, but of course we're miles from the bulkhead here. So this is like the standard type engine uh, uh, torque mount or engine steady, and that would normally bolt there, but we're miles from the bulkhead. So I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna do with this yet. I could bring it back down to the chassis rails, you know, so if this was mounted here, I could kind of have something coming down like that. But I do kind of think this chassis rail will end up extended up here. I'll have a, maybe a 45 degree piece in, because it'll kind of cloak all this area off and 
give more room. Yeah, it's, we need to add a, still a lot more strength into this yet. This one plate that I've put in is not, not gonna be up to the job. So, um, you know, we're probably gonna have something in there and then that'll probably tie perfectly onto this torque mount. So I'm just not gonna worry about this for now because the most important thing is getting the engine in the correct position, the correct height, straight in the engine bay, perfectly in line with where the drive shafts want to be. There's like, getting this right has been quite a lot of like just millimeter knocking the engine backwards and forwards and um, shimming it up and down either side. But I'm now confident it is in near as damn it, the best possible position. So really what I'm gonna move on to now, now that the engine is actually kind of in the car and there's nothing underneath supporting it, there's no blocks of wood anymore. Um, I'm gonna start looking at lower arm mounts. I just want to keep trying to add more bits to the car to make it more like more car-like. The more bits I can add, the kind of quicker we're gonna progress this. Obviously, I'm leaving a lot of bits unfinished, but it's mainly because I've no idea how this engine bay is gonna look. I've no idea how it's gonna to come together. So I'm trying to kind of give myself scope to change things in the future if I need to. So yeah, we'll take a look at these lower arm mounts now. So I've just, I've just drilled and tapped this beam to accept uh, the threads that match this uh, wheel plate that I've made. So obviously I've made these plates up to carry the uh, drive flange and the hub knuckle in the correct position based on the track width and the wheelbase of the car. So obviously this is now fixed permanently in the correct position in the middle of the car. Just used uh, one of the extra uh, laser cut plates to kind of line it up and square it up and then drilled it and tapped it through. So now that I've got that in, this is now fixed in the position it's gonna be based on the track width we've decided on. It's kind of tricky to know because obviously the car's got no wings on it. I've had to kind of place them on and use wheels that we're not sure we're gonna be using yet um, with tires that we definitely are. I've had to kind of assume whereabouts the wheel is gonna sit in the wheel arch because we want kind of a standard look, but that is gonna come with some compromises in that really short control arms aren't necessarily gonna provide uh, the best possible suspension setup. So we've already got some compromises. I've spaced the wheel out as far as I dare go before I think we're gonna to get to a point where it's gonna look kind of wide boy stance, um, which we don't want. So yeah, I've got to that point and now I'm kind of starting to look at control arms. Now it's been, I've had a couple of days to think about it and the, what we made originally was this. So this was kind of to get the car rolling for the late brake show tour in July last year. Kind of made these lower arms up just to get the car rolling on these golf hub knuckles. And um, I kind of knew at the time it wasn't really, you know, it wasn't really the best way to go, but I was working with what I'd got. Couldn't really modify any of the original fixing points or anything, so had to stick with it. Now that I've had time to think about it, I think we're probably better off going for like a one piece lower arm setup rather than trying to do a two piece standard type lower control arm and tie bar. I'll get far more adjustability and stiffness out of a one piece arm, which is far more traditional with a McPherson strut setup nowadays. So we're kind of not going to need this, this front point that we jigged in. I did think at the time we wouldn't need it. Um, we don't, so I'm not going to go with that. I'm kind of going to scrap these, what I've made. Obviously I can use the, the rose joints and things. Um, but what it does mean is we're going to need another suspension fixing point right back here on this box section that I'd originally welded in. One of the first things I did for the lower control arm mounts. And we're probably gonna want the front mount a little bit further forward, more or less directly under the drive shaft. Obviously the ball joint is gonna be perfectly in line with the drive shaft, it should be, because it sits directly you know, under the center line. And we can space the control arm back a little bit, but really we wanna put it under the, under the drive shaft. And then the other, fixing point for the lower arm wants to be quite a bit further back. So I'm at a point now where again, I'm probably not gonna use the other control arm points that we jigged. Again, not really a problem, but just, this is why it's quite hard to plan really far forward without kind of drawing it all up. 
So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of cut these off and then play around with some steel and see what I can come up with making some, some tubular arms. So now that I've got this original mount out of the way, I've um, drilled a plate and tacked that right onto the end of the box section. Um, and that'll form the first kind of side of the mount for this lower arm rose joint like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I've got a piece of angle. I've got one without powder coat on, which will go the other side of that. And then what I'll end up doing is I'll end up like reinforcing it on the top as well and then kind of finishing all the welds off together i'm probably going to start to take some of this so I'll, I'll probably just kind of uh, mig tack it and then um once the engine comes out i'll have a big uh, tig session and kind of weld it all up that way so yeah that's, that's going to be the first part of the lower arm mount Right, so I've got these brackets welded on now, or at least half welded on, and I've kind of set up most of the components of the lower arm that I welded last time, because we can still use most of the components, we just need to readjust them for the new kind of type or design of, of lower arm that I'm making, really. Another reason for not using that existing front point is that it's, the, the mounting is so far away and on the, on, on the um, off side, it, it's gonna be really awkward to try and get a decent um, kind of mount because of the engine change. Again, we're dealing with a completely different set of circumstances this time. So that's why I decided to try and go for a different setup. Whether it works, I don't know. I'm no expert, but you know, I've done enough research to kind of, um, you know, understand, uh, you, know, you know, roughly, roughly what we're trying to achieve. So yeah, I've got the, the standard OEM ball joint, again, Volkswagen Golf ball joint. Um, and then I've got my plate that's just drilled, piece of tube, threaded bushing in the end, and I've got the adjuster and on the rose joint. So that all makes kind of half of one lower arm then. And then my plan is to come in on the other side um, and this will be mounted the opposite way around. So, so that one is mounted that way around, this one will be mounted that way around. Um, and that's to kind of give that, that'll get that full articulation then going up and down. So I'm basically just gonna weld a, a triangle plate in the corner here and then one in the bottom and that'll allow me to put, you know, drill holes, bolt through, that'll that'll take that. It'll also add us a really good piece of gusset between here and then this tube will then attach onto this plate just like the other one has. So I've um, cut two bits of plate. Again, probably a bit overkill with the six mil plate, but um, I'm also kind of using these as a gusset between that, that main uh, piece of box section and then the kind of car body. Obviously we still got like all this to tidy up yet, but uh, yeah, that can come a bit later down the line. So I've got two bits of plate cut into little triangles. They're going in between. So say that's going to become like a gusset and then like a lower arm mount. So I've got that ball joint in there and I've got it kind of bolted in to try and square these plates up against each other. And then I've just clamped a piece of plate on top of the box section and then clamped this top triangle underneath it. So it's keeping it all nice and square, which means I'm gonna be able to easily replicate it on the other side. So get that tacked in, probably some pretty heavy tacks on there. And then, um, yeah, we can think about, you know, creating the rest of this lower arm. Right, so what we ended up with is uh, these plates tacked in here in the corner and again rose jointed with this arm 
onto the uh, kind of main lower control arm. I did end up using a two-piece uh, setup in the end. With the geometry and angles we've got, we're not gonna be able to have much adjustment if I'd have made this fixed. Um, there's two or three ways I could make it fixed, but this still works in most instances. It's not what is kind of most traditional in terms of like more modern cars now, but really with it being fully rose jointed, you know, we've got pillow ball top mounts and etc. There's not really that much of a compromise here based on all the compromises that the car will have. This is going to be fine really for what we're looking for. So I'm at a point now where I just need to replicate this on the other side. And you know, um, we've, we've got suspension. We've got like actual suspension that can travel. Uh, yeah. And then we could, we could really put the car on the ground. It's, you know, it's, it would have full, a fully working suspension at that point. Next thing we're gonna be looking at is the top mount positions and inner wings. So the front end is gonna be removable. It's gonna be kind of like a flip front, hopefully, that's the plan. The inner wings are gonna be separate or not welded to the outer wings. And like I said, that, we've kind of got that problem with all the holes in the outer wings. Um, so I'm still kind of coming up with ways of how we can solve that. But the plan is to have a sheet metal inner wing, which actually matches the original Allegro profile, only with a strut top sticking out of it, basically. Um, and yeah, that'll come down and match this inner wing. Uh, it'll come down and match to this chassis leg section, and it'll hopefully look kind of original-ish. I mean, it's not gonna look really original, it's got a wrong engine in it, but uh, just try and make something that's more in keeping with what the original Allegro engine bay did look like. So that's gonna be the next thing we're on with, really, because once we've got the strut tops fixed in position, we've no need for the jig mount anymore, which means we can then put the wheel on and begin to think about a steering angle, and that'll allow us to know what height the steering rack needs to be at. So there's still loads to do, but we are making good progress. You know, we're at a point now where we can start to look a bit further down the road than, you know, just mounting the engine and things like that. So yeah, it's coming along really well. Um, definitely having loads of fun doing it, and hopefully it's, uh, hopefully it's entertaining to watch. So yeah, thanks for watching.